What's up? What's up, folks? What's up? Hope y'all are doing well today. It's a beautiful day here in Georgia. Weather feels wonderful. Hope you're fine wherever you are. Uh, we already have some questions. I'll go ahead and, and address some of these um, so I can check it out and things. And make sure I pull these up bigger, maybe? Can I do that? In my opinion, what's the hardest rudiment to uh, to consistent, uh, consistently play clean? I would say um, any drag rudiment or uh, any rudiment that deals with a rough. Um, they vary widely if I'm just playing it by myself um, a lot of times, but as far as interpretation of exactly where to start it, because um, you try, really try to get it as close to that primary note as possible and things, but um, to do that with, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people consistently is, is extremely difficult. Um, and a lot of people just meter those out. So they'll actually play them a little bit wider than what they normally would play them in another setting. Hopefully that answered uh, the question. How do I improve on your flams? We're actually gonna be playing some flams today. So um, hopefully there'll be a few different ideas in there. I saw that comment and I was like, you know what, we can hit up some flams with, with some of our stuff today. So I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Do I have a favorite drum teacher or musician? Um, there's a few, there's a, oh, there's a few. I would say um, one of my favorite drummers um, in general is uh, Steve Smith, he's a drum set player. Um, he does have a, a heavy rudimental background. So uh, check him out. Um, I really like uh, Shi Yi Wu. Um, I really like uh, Evelyn Glennie. She's a, a marimbas. She who is also, um, or at least that's how they primarily identify. They play obviously every other percussion instrument out there. A lot of my favorite teachers aren't necessarily musicians, um, and the, even the ones who are aren't necessarily drummers, if that makes sense. So uh, I watch a lot of um, master classes and lectures, and um, yeah, so it's. A lot of my teaching influences come from a lot of different places. Where are the children? That's, that's not necessarily music, if that makes sense. Hopefully that answered that one. How do I get used to, I'm thinking you meant weird adjustments on your right hand. I'll have to know a little bit more information as to what those weird adjustments are. So give me more information on that. What's the best rudiment to chop out on? I would either say, um, for me, it's either flam taps or it's just either an open roll or a buzz roll. Um, it, and it, it can really go in any of those directions. But yeah, definitely one of those. Have I ever seen the Paul Rennick Masterclass? I've seen a few of them by him. Um, I'm not sure exactly which ones are on YouTube, but yeah, I've seen a few from Paul Rennick. And I really do, I really do like the way Paul teaches and I like his philosophy. So um, he's definitely uh, a, a source for, for some of my uh, concepts of how I personally play. I don't necessarily always teach that, um, but uh, yeah, I really, I really like, I really like Paul Rennick. Um, to the teaching thing, I guess some teachers that I really like, um, there's a, an astrophysicist, his name is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, I really like his teachings. Um, there's an apologist, his name is uh, William Lane Craig. I really like the way that he communicates, even if I don't necessarily agree with like <laughs> all the things he's saying, but I think as a lecturer and as a, and as a teacher, I think he's wonderful. more the flesh of the base of the fingers so back of the stick flesh oh I guess he's sort of redoing it how much do I practice for myself nowadays 
It really just depends. It's, it's kind of hard for me to keep track because I'm always, um, I kind of always have my drum pad around me. Um, and, and this is a, a question that, um, that uh, uh, Dave asked, uh, Steph Dave, uh, who's one of my Patreon supporters. Thank you for, for, for supporting the page. Um, but he says, how much do I practice for myself in a week? Um, hmm. It really just depends. You know, I always have kind of my pad hanging out just because I'm always writing stuff. Uh, and I'm always thinking of different ways to teach my students and things. Um, there are things that I am currently working on now, but I just always have my sticks around. Even in my car, uh, don't do that. It's dangerous. <laughs> but I'll always have my sticks around. Um, I have my drum set set up here in the studio. You guys can't see it, but it's kind of off to the side. Um, maybe I'll do like a studio tour at some point. I think I have it at some point on one of my videos, maybe. But um, I'll hit up some drum set um, at least a few minutes a day. Um, I do record for, for people who kind of send me their remote tracks and things. And since I do record a lot of my own music, um, I, I get a chance to play a good little bit. Um, so it, it really, it's hard to keep track just because it's a, it's a lifestyle for me. So it's just always happening kind of on and off throughout the day. There's not a set like, this is the time I'm gonna practice, especially being that I have two kids. <laughs> so that gets weird. Hopefully that answers your question. I will take my practice time seriously if I ever show up at a school, um, because that's really the only time I get to be on a, a keyboard. So I'll normally show up 45 minutes to an hour early, and I'll immediately start working on patterns that I can't play. Um, so yeah, that just depends on how often I can get to a school. Oh, he says he's gonna retype that, awesome, awesome. Uh, weird adjustments getting the back of the stick to rest more towards the palm. Oh, hmm. I would have to see, I mean, I, I think you're meaning like the angle of your stick, like being more so this way than what it should, as opposed to over here. Um, if that is the case, I don't know. It's depending on what you're doing and, and what your teacher wants, that can be a few different things. I would say one thing um, in order to make that more comfortable, at least in the beginning, is to look at doing more so of an American grip, which means that the kind of, uh, the middle part between your thumb and that first finger is what's kind of facing up, not exactly your thumb, but it's kind of angled. I think that helps people get that stick over a little bit more into the fleshy part. Um, from what I've seen, some people will have the angle a little bit too far over if they're playing exactly in German grip, which just means that your palm is uh, absolutely down which is a wonderful grip, especially if you have your fingers, your sticks that far over for just straight up having a lot of um, uh, finger, finger motion. You'll notice a lot of the metal guys who have to do like really fast blast beats. Um, check out the way that they hold their sticks. A lot of them do have it kind of really far over. I have seen some, some timpanists that um, play in the French tradition but they play German as far as the orientation of their hand. So they're playing definitely with their fingers, but it just happens to be in a German grip. And a lot of times their fingers will kind of, the sticks will be further out this way in their hands and things. So it's not necessarily bad, unless you're obviously trying to match aesthetics with other people. And if you start to have um, playing problems, that's what I would say. Awesome, awesome. Cool, yeah. Thanks, Josh. I'm, I'm glad that that helped. So the stick is racing too much on the fleshy base part. Um, yeah, if, if down if down strokes hurt, then it's probably definitely too far over. So yeah, definitely move it over or maybe thinking about changing the angle of where your arm is and things as far as your, your arm orientation um, this way if that makes sense. Um, right now, this pad is actually a little bit too high. I had to change up my setting, uh, my setup a little bit uh, today, but um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, ho hopefully that helps though. I would, I would try to work with this angle and move it over and then kind of assess where your elbow is in relation to your side 
and things. So hopefully, hopefully that helps with that business. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, 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 awesome. Cool. So I definitely wanted to, to kind of answer some questions and things before we started drumming. Hopefully you guys have your sticks. I'm ready to play, man. It is right at it. Yeah, it's three o'clock. Let's play some drums, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully my levels are okay. I had to kind of break down my system and then kind of build it back up. Um, Cause I had to do somebody's live stream and things. So hopefully we're good to go. Hopefully we're good to go. We're gonna start with some eighth notes on the right hand. Yeah. Mm. Nice and relaxed, nothing too huge yet. Eighth notes, right hand. Yeah. And one and two and one and two and ba ba ba. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and already trying to relax my face, relax my shoulders. Trying to breathe nice and smooth. Ah. Feeling the stick in that first finger, but then I'm also gonna start to feel it kind of in that second finger just to feel how it feels in my hand kind of in the middle. A lot of times I'll switch my fulcrum back from both of those kind of back and forth. And a lot of times I will feel it in both of those parts of my hand at the same time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and left hand ready and up. Only like a good forte right now, nothing too crazy. Relaxing those shoulders. Where are the children? <laughs> right hand ready and oh. Hand ready and no. Oh, I like it. Right hand ready and oh. Left hand ready and hey. Right hand, I'm gonna add a double on the last note. Two and three and four and a one. And a one. And a one. And that double is happening on the same hand before I go over to the next hand. And a one, two, and three, and four, and a one. Three, and four, and a one. Three, and four. And it's just a way for me to engage a different part of my hand after playing these, my bad, wrist strokes that are kind of legato. And a one. Open, don't want to close those down. Da 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 And a three, and a one, and two, and a three, and four, and a one, and two, and a three, and four, and a one, and two, and a three, and four. And we'll go into ones. Back to the fours. These are the 
ones. to open doubles and 16th notes. Nice and relax. Want to be in touch with my body to see if there's any tension, but then I'm also going to get rid of that notion and only try to hear the sounds. Whatever my body has to do to make the sounds, yeah? And then I'm checking back in with my body. Is it sustainable? Am I using the muscles that are the most efficient to get the sound that I want? Always kind of going back and forth, walking that fine line. This pad is too high for me though. <laughs> I'm gonna do one measure of doubles, one measure of singles. One, two, three, four. Doubles, singles. Doubles, singles. Doubles, singles. <laughs> He's laughing at the doorbell. Singles, doubles, singles. This is actually a, a song I made for Halloween. It's going to be coming out at the... Uh, end of next month. I think like a week or so before Halloween. Doubles, singles, doubles, singles, yeah. Doubles, singles, very nice. Doubles, singles. And I'm trying to compare the sounds between both of the skill sets. Yeah. To, try to, uh, to try to make them sound as similar as possible. We'll do two counts each. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two, 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 uh, uh, single, uh, uh, single, uh, uh, single, uh, uh, single. Do one count. Double. Stay on the double. Going into paradiddle. Nice relaxed accent. Beautiful contrast on the big notes and small notes, baby. Ha! 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 Yeah! I'm gonna go from one measure of paradiddles into one measure of that sort of open big roll. Here it is, paradiddle, roll, paradiddle, doubles, yeah. Nice and even, ah, uh. ah, uh. open, ah, uh. open, very nice. have a nice and even transition between those two elements. You 
got it. <laughs> Let's do two counts. We're going to be doing two paradiddle diddles and a paradiddle to get us over to the next hand. Yeah? So it'll sound like paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, yeah? Let's try it. Ready? And. The letters are so little. I need to find a way to make them bigger, probably. Singles, ready, and you can bring those on up. Those decorations should know those. Yeah, not as even as I would want. Evaluating the pressure in my hand. I'm gonna accent one and three. right after that right hand. Back to just one and three. I'm gonna add the accent right before that right hand. Yeah? You'll see what I'm talking about. every three notes. Just 
down beats. Let's do all of the E's. All of the us. All of the us, my bad, that was the hands. <laughs> Back to the downies. This is the ease. These are the hands. <laughs> All of the us. Back to the downs. Two accents. Move it over one sixteenth. One more. First and last. First two. Middle two. Last two. First and last, baby! All accents. Doubles. Singles. Doubles. Singles. <laughs> Doubles. Eighth notes, right hand. Left hand. Right hand. Got it. Left hand. We'll stop right here. I'll take a look at some of these comments and then we'll do some, some other rudiments here. <laughs> you said the door, the doorbell. So clean and relaxed. I try to be. Some of the stuff was a little bit shaky here today, so I'm gonna have to check that out. Hey, yo, it's a beautiful day. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Tim Norris said, Chops, what's up, Tim? What's up, what's up, Tim? <laughs> Anyways, hey, so that little warm up wasn't anything too extraneous because we're actually going to get into a little bit of some open and closed action here. And when I do open and close, one of the reasons I find it to be important, um, I'll go ahead and turn this off the beat beat. As I said, yeah, it's, it's actually a song. Um, it's gonna be released on iTunes and Apple Music and Spotify and all of the other places. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah, Tim, that junk is open, son. And thanks, especially in my own playing, you know? <laughs> you know how it is. Um, Anyway, so yeah, that that actual, uh, that's just the backing track. I took out all the words just so it wouldn't be crazy confusing for you guys to listen to and things. So what I was saying is, is when I actually do my open to close rudiments, um, there's two things that's going to happen. Thing number one, I really like to take my time. A lot of times I like to hear different types of rhythms and different types of melodies on top of some of the stuff. So a lot of times I do sing on top of the jams. Uh, thing number two, 
you're going to hear the paradigm shift. So for me, I'll start, and, and maybe it's something like paradiddles, I guess, which is what we'll start with, and you'll hear me kind of doing every sort of beat as like a quarter note, I guess. But then as I move along, I'm going to start to hear it almost as eighth notes, and I'm going to start to hear it as sixteenth notes and things of that particular nature. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what's going to happen there. That sounds always... And he says, that arm is so steady. I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's a continuous kind of push for relaxation and big open sounds, you know. And sometimes I go too far in one direction, right, with um, trying to have just big sounds. And there's too much tension in my body. And then sometimes I go the other direction where I'm nice and relaxed but um, the rhythms will probably slur or it's just not um, as accurate or as full as I want it to be. So there's always kind of a push back and forth with that. Cool. So Paul says, um, what do I do to motivate, my, motivate myself to play the full kit? First of all, that's my original instrument. So I don't really have to motivate myself. It's just fun to me and I like doing it and things um i do practice to full songs because that's what makes the money right if you can groove and if you can play um if you can play in the pocket and you can make normal songs sound good then that's where the money is right you probably won't ever hear me like gritting flam drags on a drum set <laughs> you probably won't ever hear like the coolest flam passage <laughs> or whatever on something like that. I mean, sure, maybe like you'll hear a diddle or two in there somewhere, but um, the types of things that I practice are just playing normal grooves, but then adding just that little bit of secret sauce to it. So, you know, I, I practice putting little hi-hat patterns in there. So, you know, I can have a regular rhythm like and I'll move that right hand over to like the ride cymbal or something. And then that's when I'll start to kind of add a little bit of flavor with that left foot. Boom. So I, I'm messing around with just that one little, that one little splash of sound over on my left foot. And everything else is just solid. It's not going to throw, you know, the guitarist off. It's not going to throw the singer off. And so, so that's the kind of stuff that I practice because it's immediately um, usable at a gig. It's immediately usable if I'm if I'm doing a recording session for somebody, and uh, and that's what really matters is if it feels good to non drummers, and if it's interesting to non drummers. And what's interesting to people who don't play drums is just stuff that feels good, stuff that makes them dance, stuff that complements the song, um, and things. I have a a, a a motto, I guess. It's not a theory. I have a motto, and it just says that that sound wins, right? Hashtag sound wins. So if I have some really cool lick that I'm working on, but it doesn't fit the particular song that I'm playing, I'm just not gonna play it within that within that song and things. Hopefully that answered the question. I think I'll do some videos from behind the kit. I do have maybe two or three primer videos if you sort of go back a little bit into my, um, into my videos on the page where I just have uh, it's almost like a grid type of situation where I'm just moving the bass drum around, right? Boom, cock them, tim tim, cock them, ta, boom, cock them, tim, cock them, ta, pow, tim tim, cock them, tim tim, cock on, tim, cock them, tim tim, cock them, boom, cock. That kind of stuff, moving the bass drum around. I think I have one with 16th notes, right? type of thing. And I think I might have one with um, maybe moving different hi-hat patterns around and things, but <laughs> sound wins. You know Tim, Tim, Tim knows. I've known Tim for a long time. He's, he's a homie, right? Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've sort of contemplated with kind of um, doing some other videos. There are plenty of people who have educational drum set videos. Uh, Mike Johnson is one of my favorite educators online. Go check him out. Go check him out. Um, I'm trying to think of other people who actually teach drum set. Um, there's plenty of them out there. You guys can name some. 
um, and things. But yeah, the, there's plenty of people who do inspirational videos, so that like, they show you cool stuff and they're playing to songs. That's not necessarily education, that's inspiration, which is also needed. Um, but um, I'm trying to think of some people who are actual, like, on a consistent basis, kind of showing things and slowing it down. Um, I'll have to maybe think about that for a little bit. Do I beatbox? Yeah, I beat. Well, not officially. Um, I grew up in sort of a freestyle culture here in um, uh, the southern part of North America, right in Georgia, uh, and things. So yeah, I, gr I grew up sort of beatboxing a whole lot while people freestyled and, and things of that nature. So and it really actually helps me out when I when it comes to my ability to sing rhythms and me trying to jump onto certain kinds of culture, like um, tabla culture with, within Indian music, like with tabla drums. I don't do the official uh, syllables like they do, but um, I do take on some principles of how they um, have to understand things from, a, from an internal standpoint and be able to speak it or articulate it before they actually play it. So I really, I really do believe in that. Can I do some molar technique warm-ups? I had one at one point. I, I don't know for whatever reason. I think because it got a copyright strike, it got taken down from my actual YouTube page. So I might have to come up with something a little bit different to put up. Oh, Rob B. Down Brown. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been following Rob's page for forever. I don't know why I didn't say that, though. Rob's a cool dude, and he has a solid pocket, man. He's, he's, been, he's been on YouTube for a good while. A really really good wow go check out his page check out mike johnston really really cool people and of course the folks over like at drumeo and things like that have a really a really uh a really good diverse group of people sort of coming through um most of their good stuff where it's like really in depth is kind of behind a paywall but um for the most part yeah it's, it's some really good people out there um so yeah those, those are some some good suggestions let's do a little bit of some rudiments then let's start nice and slow I'm gonna just be doing some paradiddles. <laughs> Everybody can do those. And I'm just gonna try to keep nice, even quality while trying to stay relaxed. Um, yeah, let's let's try it. I'm gonna start at this speed. Da, dum, 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 da, dum, dum, dum. One and two and fifty and one and. Switch the camera left, right, left, left. A little bit faster, yeah. Little notes, hit the band, pop, pop, that band now. Da 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 da
Here it is, paradiddle diddles. Here it is. trying to make sure that I'm not crushing those two diddles. Nice and relaxed. I'm going to have to get closer to I can't see the I can't see the letters. They're so small on my computer. I need to get like a different display.
do some flam taps. We'll take these uh, nice and slow. So we'll just go right, flam, left, flam, flam, left, and tap, and flam, right, flam, left. Really making sure that that grace note and the primary note keep the same distance apart from one another, going from that right hand to the left hand. The bit faster, right, the right, the left, left, the right, the right, left, left, right, the right, the left. And just as a little bit of secret sauce, especially if you're just learning to play your flam taps. One thing that I get sort of my, my beginner students to do is to go ahead and rebound right after that grace note. It sort of helps them to not be frantic to get to that next uh, accent for the flam tap. To some Swiss Army. kind of uh, accepted that there would be a little bit more of an evening out of uh, the bigger notes and small notes as we get a little bit faster so the the heights aren't as uh, concrete per se as with uh, some other uh, rudiments
check them out, check them out, check them out. So we didn't really push um, most of those like to extreme, extreme levels there, but um, it's just a little bit that just to kind of keep our hands moving and things. And a lot of times if, if I'm taking those like with my students, or if I'm just taking those by myself, um, I will take them off of the left hand also. And I will try to go into maybe some of the hybrid variations. So I'll kind of go in of it and I'll come out and I'll go back in as far as the speed and then I'll come out and then maybe do a, a little bit of a variation um, or kind of like an AB pattern. So one of the things I'll do, for example, with like the Swisses there is I'll play um, sort of four of them down and then four up. So I'm accenting the last one. Just, uh, uh, right? So B. That kind of business and things. So uh, cool, cool, cool. Let me know how you guys did. He says, so cool, so cool, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The beatbox and paradiddle. <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot of beatboxing. It's kind of hot in here. And honestly, my throat has been a little bit crazy um, today. So I didn't want to do too much. Sometimes I do, I, I do too much, especially in my classes, uh, because you know we're playing on tables and drums and I'm like yelling things. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like trying to give people information. And of course I'm like yelling and singing and stuff. So I lose my voice super quickly. Um, all of my students can attest to that. <laughs> Uh, watching you in a new t-shirt. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Thanks for the support. John Myers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys haven't seen, um, the t-shirts, uh, you can go check them out. And most of the time I leave a description in my, uh, in my actual, um, I guess description box of, of all the jams. So that's one of them, and then um, it's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound. <laughs> and then this is uh, one of the other ones. And of course, you can get them in different colors and things. Um, but yeah, so that's how that's how that rolls. Thank you for the support. It really does help help me out and things. Awesome, awesome. Darius Rouse is here. What's up? What's up? Hope your hands are doing well. Um, I'm really liking uh, the new setup that you guys have at your house or in the studio uh, with your dad's new camera and stuff. It looks really, really cool. Did I ever get kicked out of class for drumming on the school desk? No, not necessarily. I did a, a pretty good amount of drumming in class, but most of the time, of course, it was just after the stuff was done. I'm, I'm sort of a nerd, so I was always really interested in academic pursuits. So it was never a huge issue for me. Um, if anything, I would get done with my music early and I would just kind of tap on my leg or something. Um, I did uh, at like my lunch times and things, people would always call me over and I would have like my little pen and pencil and <laughs> and I would do all the stuff, you know. Um, what sequence was, oh, that sequence was wonderful and amazing. Voice and drum is so motivating. <laughs> oh, thanks, 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 thanks. I do it all the time, you know, and actually I do I do it way more than that. I guess I don't really have any videos of me just straight up singing and playing drums. It's what I do most of the time in my class, um, in my classrooms, um, just because it allows for me to kind of keep time and show my students different kinds of ways that songs fit over patterns and stuff. Um, and it allows for me to kind of constantly talk and give them information. Like your left hand's too big, right hand's too small, the flap's too open, great job over here, blah, blah, blah. And I'll kind of add that into the songs. Um, I will go through <laughs> all of the popular songs most of the time. So the various TikTok jams um, that'll kind of freestyle end up in, in, the, in the songs while I'm doing my rudiments and things. And then um, whatever various songs are on the radio. I guess one of the reasons I don't do that on my YouTube page is I prefer for my videos to be, um, I guess, for them for them to have longevity, if that makes sense. So if somebody comes back to my video and it's like two years later or three years later and they have no idea what that reference was that I just said about something that happened on TikTok that might or might not be here, um, you know, three years from now, then it's not really something that lasts for too long. So. That's why I probably don't do that on, on some of my main videos. It's a beautiful day for music and a wonderful day for sound. Yes, thank you, thank you, David. That's what it is. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. 
Um, some some really cool stuff uh, is happening, uh, and I'm not just saying it because I'm one of their educational artists, but if you guys go check out uh, the VF Padlicks um, that a guy named Juan is putting out, I actually don't know him. Um, his last name starts with an M. If you guys sort of know that name, drop it in the comments and things, but he's, he's putting it mainly on Instagram um, and things. So he's, he's doing kind of like a little lick sort of exercise thing per week. And I've been sort of participating in some of those just because it's quick and stuff. And it's really cool to, to follow the hashtag and see what a lot of other people are doing. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, some other things that I've been checking out is uh, he's a primarily a um, concert-based percussionist, but his name is Josh Jones and things. And he has a lot of really cool stuff on his Instagram page and on his YouTube. And, and sometimes he goes live on Facebook also just showing you the types of things that he's doing on his pad to kind of work out and stuff. So if you haven't seen him, definitely check him out, Josh Jones. Um, I'm not sure if it's Josh Jones Drums that's on Instagram. I actually don't have my phone hooked up um, to my switcher, so I can't show you on the screen um, and things. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably try to do that maybe at, at some other point. Um, and things. So I've I've, been, I've really been checking out some of those videos. Um, there have been a few a few sort of drum set videos I've been kind of checking out that are, are kind of really motivational for me to kind of think about things in a certain way because I've really been trying to get into um, playing certain patterns but then taking the patterns purposely off the grid and putting them back on the grid while keeping certain elements still like kind of like you know my hi hat having it still on on the downbeat and things like that so let me know what you guys have been kind of working on and stuff um i would really like to hear some of that stuff practice in front of a mirror uh yeah sometimes it is helpful i would actually say um film yourself practicing is a better idea um, just so you you're not conscious of what you look like from the other side so you're more you're more likely to play the way that you play and then go back and assess yourself like watching yourself as a different person I think sometimes that's way more helpful than trying to fix yourself in real time in a mirrored view right also practicing in a mirror will sometimes miscue your your the way that you hear your music right and it, and it ends up adding tension when it doesn't necessarily need to because you're kind of working on an aesthetic value as opposed to um, uh, an aural value, right? The way you hear sound and things. So I don't know. I don't really get my people to do it too much. Maybe um, like my cymbal line, of course, they'll, they'll do that kind of stuff. Um, if, if bass drummers are having problems looking at the path of their sticks, then that's something, you know, I'll kind of line them up and stuff. Um, people like drum majors, uh, they'll practice in front of mirrors and things, but um, not necessarily for a whole lot of rudimental practices. It is good to see how you look, but I think sometimes it's just more beneficial to do it um, via video than via a, a mirror and things, right? If you do want to see other players, uh, just circle it up, like if, if you and the rest of your um, friends are playing and things, just circle it up and kind of have that one person as the constant and just sort of compare and contrast and see what's happening. Most of the time, if you have problems with your sounds not being even, it can be a height thing, but then also it can be a velocity thing. So sometimes your sticks are physically coming to the same height, but one of them just has more speed behind the stroke or more weight behind the stroke. Um, those are two different parameters, right? So a velocity is the speed of the stroke. When I say the weight of the stroke is how much you're like pushing through, um, pushing through the drum head, right? Um, I'll kind of show you. So somebody can take um, like taps like this, right? You see how my stick is in kind of constant motion, right? You can technically speed, uh, you can speed that stroke up to where it spends more time at the top. So I'm adding velocity to the note. Um, not adding speed to the tempo or the rhythm, but I'm adding speed to the, to the individual uh, stroke of the stick. Uh, if I start back kind of in the middle there and I start to have this kind of weighted push down sort of approach, I'm adding weight to the stroke. 
Um, if you can do both of those, you're going to end up being totally fine because then you just kind of get to pick or whatever the preference of your, of your teacher or instructor might be for certain things. You just get to kind of go back and forth. Um, but all of that deals with the general idea of having touch. Can you take weight off of the stick and add speed? Can you add even more speed to get into like the piston stroke kind of area? Or can you, um, or can you just add a whole lot of weight? Can you be the sumo wrestler and that's the thing that beats the opponent? Or can you be the ninja, this super fast, and that beats the opponent, right? Hopefully that helped. Any particular suggestions regarding how not to overtrain with weights and how it might hamper playing? Ooh, I am the wrong person. I do not lift weights, right? At one point, I, I did um, run a pretty good bit, and I did a pretty good amount of, like, push-ups and things. Um, I would do planks all the time because it helps, like, your core. But as far as lifting heavy, I'm not, I'm not really the, the person to answer those questions. I know it is an issue for people who do lift heavy, um, the issue of flexibility and the issue of just having recovery days and things like that. So I don't know. Maybe if somebody else here that that lifts heavy or something might have some information on that but I personally don't lift heavy weights if anything I do at least did <laughs> cardio if that makes sense and then um, more like balance and endurance sort of training more more so than heavy weights if that's what you mean um, yeah yeah as far as overtraining with um, with chop outs and things I take it I had to start taking it real serious because when I really got into practicing when I was in high school, you know, I'd wake up um, two hours before school and I would just slam my hands to death, you know. And then even when I came home after school, like, you know, after marching band practice or whatever, I would, um, I would just completely destroy my hands again. Um, and I would come to the dinner table and my father would be completely mad because I couldn't even hold like the fork and things. So. Um, I did have problems with kind of overdoing it and I didn't really give myself a whole lot of rest days just because I, I knew I wanted to be really good and I knew I didn't have the type of information that other people at more privileged schools had. So I was like, if I, if I can overdo the physical portion, the portion that I know that I have control over, even if I don't have the very specific education, I can control the physicality part and, uh, and I completely overdid it um, and things. Uh, I mean, obviously it kind of worked out because my hands later on became smoother and I started to be able to relax and actually use the stick. But um, what I tell people is, you know, if you have a for real chop out day that you're like for real throwing your hands out and things, definitely make sure you give yourself a long, like good warm down, you know, keep those hands nice and stretched out. It's going to sound boring, but drink water drink water, <laughs> right? And, um, and then just make sure that, uh, you know, your other days throughout the week, uh, you're working on different types of muscle groupings and you're not necessarily chopping out. So, um, you know, maybe a chop out two or three times a week is definitely enough if you're really trying to go for it. I definitely wouldn't do it seven days out of the week or something like that. Um, it, would, it would probably end up just being too much. Cool, cool, cool. So, Hopefully those those um, those answers and, and things were good for you guys. Do me a favor and, and hit the like like button if you haven't. It does help out the algorithm. There's a lot of people who still haven't heard about or seen my page, and 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 there's always new people every single week <laughs> who will comment on a video like eight years ago, and they're like, "Who are you? I've never seen your stuff," and things. And I know like the videos aren't going to have like thousands of views and that kind of stuff because it's purely educational, and for some people it's a little bit of entertainment. But, uh, but for the most part, I'm not like playing the trap songs and things. Um, maybe sometimes, but not like popular songs. You get what I'm saying, right? So thank you guys for joining me um, today. And as always, it's a beautiful day for music. And it's a wonderful day for sound. I'll see y'all next Saturday. Deuce.